The Balkans are often labeled as Europe's hellhole due to the high poverty rate, crime rate, corruption and violent history. But those who mock the Southeast are incapable of understanding the beauty in the chaotic nature of the Balkans. Because however we look at it, despite all the obvious problems we have, the Balkans are a magical region thanks to the beautiful nature, stunning coastlines, a diverse architecture, mixed population and of course the bizarre culture. So today we're gonna look at some of the oddest traditions from various Balkan countries and hopefully you'll finally understand the allure of this region's chaos. everyone and welcome back to my channel. In case you're new here, hi, I'm Anna from Transylvania and I make videos about the culture, history, literature and gaming related topics of Central and Eastern Europe because I feel like there's not enough content about it online. So if you're into that, please consider subscribing. In today's video, I'm gonna show you some of the most bizarre elements of Balkan culture and to do so, I'm gonna be accompanied by a fellow Balkan YouTuber. Wait, did you just call me a Balkan YouTuber? Croatia is Central European, goddammit. Pičku materinu i ta jebene Balkan, stalno nas trpaju tamo kada smo svi poturici, a ne mitel Evropa. Fine! Okay, alright. I stand corrected. Today I'll be accompanied by a Central European YouTuber. Hello everyone, I'm Joža from the Kropnik channel and I make ironic videos about the Balkans, but mostly about my home country Croatia. If you're interested in such topics, feel free to check out my channel after you've watched this video until the end of course. I especially encourage my female viewers to check him out because you know he's 185 and he knows how to bake homemade bread. So without further ado let's dissect this topic. For those of you unfamiliar with this region and its shenanigans, let me briefly explain why the Balkans are so chaotic. The Balkan Peninsula is located in southeastern Europe. It's difficult to define where exactly the Balkans start or end, but this is the list of countries usually considered as completely or partially in the Balkans. There are people who think the word Balkans has a negative, almost insulting meaning and who get angry when that word is used to describe countries in southeastern Europe. Where is Balkan? Here Balkan confusion. Slovenia Balkan begins, Slavic primitives and so on. However, in this video and on both of our channels, the word Balkans has no negative or political meaning and is instead used as a synonym for southeastern Europe. This region has a very long and complicated history and it's always been the border between major empires, religious groups and cultures. Because of all the intense patriotism, intolerance and conflicting geopolitics political interests, it's considered as one of Europe's most unstable regions, often called the powder keg of Europe. I'm going to commit a war crime. I am going to commit several war crimes. The powder keg exploded in the 1990s during the breakup of Yugoslavia and the war that followed haunts the region to this day. Despite all the quirks of this region and its people, its diverse history, geography and peculiar culture make it one of the most beautiful and interesting parts of Europe. However, because of all the diversity and cultural mixing and mashing in this region, some of these cultural practices may seem odd, almost bizarre, to the outside observer. The bizarre nature of Balkan traditions comes from the mixture of various cultures due to the region's complicated history and diverse population. In ancient times, the Balkans were mostly populated by Illyrians, Thracians, Greeks and Macedonians, and some of our traditions date back to those times. A notable example is the Kolo Circle Dance, which is popular in Serbia, Croatia and Bosnia and Herzegovina, which is believed to have Illyrian origins. A similar dance exists in other Balkan countries too, known as Hora in 
Romanian, Horo in Bulgaria, and Oro in North Macedonia and Montenegro, which originates from the ancient Greek chorus dance. In the mid 6th century, the Slavic migrations to the Balkans began, which resulted in a rapid population exchange that heavily influenced this region's culture. With that, traditions related to Slavic paganism became quite popular, such as the Dodola and Perperuna, which were Balkan rainmaking customs practiced until the 20th century when young boys and girls danced and sang songs during the time of drought to honor the Slavic goddess of rain. The Ottoman occupation, which started in the 14th century, also impacted our cultures. Although the Turks positively changed our cuisine and introduced us to the wonders of Turkish coffee, they had a bad habit of kidnapping children, so a handful of traditions were born to prevent that. For example, during the Ottoman rule, tattooing Christian symbols on the hands of young Christian Catholic girls was a widespread tradition in Croatia and some parts of Bosnia and Herzegovina, with the purpose of protecting them from being kidnapped and converted to Islam. And these types of traditional Croatian tattoos are still quite popular even today. Another notable influence is religion, the most popular beliefs being Christian Orthodoxy, Roman Catholicism and Sunni Islam. A widespread Balkan Orthodox tradition is related to the celebration of Epiphany, commemorating the baptism of Jesus Christ. In Serbia, Romania and Bulgaria, this is celebrated in early January when a priest throws a cross into the river and men have to jump into the icy water to fetch it. Despite the highly religious nature of this area, many pagan traditions survived from the pre-Christian era as well, and most of them involve people dressing up as various animals or creatures from folk tales and mythology. A common example would be the Kafra, aka goat dance from Romania, similar to the Skiros goat festival in Greece, but you can see people dressed as goats during the Bulgarian cookery festival and the Croatian Rijeka festival. Is it just me, or does this dressing up as domestic animals thing look like Balkan people were the original furries? Just saying. With that said, let's look at some interesting traditions from various Balkan countries. Ah, Croatia, the country with a delusion of not being in southeastern Europe. A very diverse country for its size and population. A place where Balkan, Mediterranean and Central European influences mix and mingle and create a lot of interesting debates. In a sea of unusual cultural practices, we picked one you've probably never heard of before, Pizzokiada, or the Rooster Festival, which is celebrated every year in the small town of Djurjevets. One of the most memorable parts of the festival is the reenactment of the rooster legend, performed by dozens of actors dressed in uniforms and armor from the 16th century. The festival itself is perhaps not as strange as the legend behind it, which, like every good legend in the Balkans, involves a battle against the Ottomans. The annoying hairy men from the south besieged the town of Djurjevets in the 16th century under the command of Ulama Beg. However, they couldn't defeat the Chad Croats, who defended the town, so they decided to surround it and starve the defenders. Soon, the defenders ran out of food, so following the advice of a wise old woman, they took the last food they had left, a rooster, loaded it into a cannon and shot it at the Ottoman camp. Ulama Beg misunderstood this, thinking it was an act of mockery and that the defenders had plenty of food left, so he broke the siege and retreated. The festival that celebrates this legend was first organized in 1968, and in 2006 it was declared as intangible cultural heritage by the Croatian Ministry of Culture. The rooster is still a part of the town's coat of arms, and every June, for three whole days, those who like old legends, medieval fairs, and chicken prepared in many different ways can visit the town of Djurjevets and enjoy the rooster festival. Croatia is a country of beautiful nature, diverse geography, and culture in a very interesting and rich past, and is definitely worth visiting and exploring if you ever travel to this region. And take my advice, kids, if a Croat invites you to a camp, proceed with caution. Despite 
Despite being severely and unfairly packed during various historical events, Bulgaria never lost its spirit and it still has some of the most interesting and beautiful customs on the entire continent. One of the coolest and possibly most dangerous traditions of this country is the sacred barefoot dance on fire called Nestinatsvo. This ancient ritual originates from the southeast side of Bulgaria and it is an interesting mixture of Eastern Orthodox beliefs and older pagan traditions, involving a barefoot dance on smoldering embers. Which shouldn't come as a surprise, I mean, who could afford shoes on a Bulgarian salary anyways? This celebration usually takes place on the 21st of May, which is the day of Saint Constantine and Saint Helen in the Greek Orthodox calendar. On this day, the icons of the two saints are taken out of a chapel, accompanied by bagpipes and drums, and the fire dancers, also known as Nestinare, have to go around the church three times after which they start dancing on the ember. Some people believe that by doing this dance, the Nestinari reach a state of religious trance, which is why they don't feel the burning pain. Now, it is important to note that not anyone can perform this dance. The role of being the Nestinari's hereditary and the successor of a fire dancer is usually the son or the daughter of the Nestinar. This tradition isn't unique to Bulgaria only, you can find it in some parts of Greece as well. Although in recent years it has become commercialized, often performed to entertain tourists, we can still appreciate the profound nature of this custom. Serbia is the bad boy of the Balkans and the place where most crazy comments on their Croatian and Albanian videos come from. <laughs> Stereotypes aside, Serbia is a very beautiful and interesting country, full of passionate people and interesting culture. One of the most recognizable parts of this culture is the Serbian wedding and all the unusual folklore surrounding. There are a number of strange folk traditions connected to the Serbian wedding and we've picked a couple of really interesting ones just to give you an idea of how intense these ceremonies can be. One of these odd customs involves the bride carrying mirrors to protect her from demons who were afraid of their own reflection. Another strange tradition was putting garlic cloves in the bride's bosom for good luck. The last strange wedding tradition from Serbia is apple shooting, still practiced in more rural parts of the country. The father-in-law puts an apple on a tree next to the bride's house, and the groom has to shoot it with a rifle before he can enter the house. So yeah, Serbian weddings are pretty intense and full of interesting and strange customs. But that's just Serbian mentality. When they party, they party hard, as we can see from all the stuff that happened in the 90s. Albania is the place that everyone is trying to run away from, since only 3 million Albanians live in their homeland and their estimated diaspora is somewhere between 7 to 10 million. <laughs> Despite all that, we cannot deny the beauty of this country. But when you drive around south of Tirana, you will notice something that might spook you, and that is the insanely large amount of scarecrows set up at unusual places. Most of them are human-shaped dolls made out of old clothes stuffed with straws. However, you will find some plushies and creepy dolls too, hanging from fences, balconies, trees, or the top floors of unfinished houses. These are called dordolets, and their role is to bring you good luck, ward off the evil eye, protect you from the envy of others and scare away the Serbs who pollute the internet with Kosovo and Serbia comments. Albanian boy, fuck your family complete, cause you Serbia. This tradition almost completely disappeared, but it re-emerged in the recent decades, with an interesting historical context. Albania as a country never had it easy, due to their history of Ottoman occupation and the oppression of the communist regime. According to some sources, after the fall of communism, people began to gain more and more wealth, which increasingly made them more paranoid of people's envy and therefore more superstitious. So the Dordolet became not just a lucky charm, but also kind of a distraction from the rest of the household's goods. Although they might seem creepy to the foreign eye, in my opinion they look actually really cool.
Slovenia is a South Slavic country trying a bit too hard to convince everyone they are Central Europeans. This river here is the official geographical limit between Balkan and Middle Europa. So beware on this South Europe civilization on the other side. Horror oriental despotism. We included them in this video anyway, and I'm sure they will be absolutely thrilled. Anyway, despite their small size, our Germanized brothers from the north have a very diverse culture, and each region has its own unique traditions. One of the more unusual traditions comes from the Prekmuria region, which is the Pannonian part of Slovenia located north of the Mura River. If there are no marriages in the village between Christmas and Ash Wednesday, or the Three Kings and Shrove Tuesday, during the carnival season the villagers will organize an event known as Borovo Gustuvanje, or marriage to a pine tree. Young men and women will drag a pine tree from the forest to the village where the ceremony takes place. The main characters of this event include the bride, who is usually the oldest unmarried woman in the village, the groom, whose job it is to protect the bride, the priest, the father and mother of the pine tree, and the masked carnival procession composed of various characters. Some people think this tradition is a way to shame unmarried youth in the village in a way that doesn't break social taboos. If you ask me, it's because a pine tree probably has more testosterone than an average Slovenian man. I'm sorry, as a Croat I just couldn't help myself. In mainstream media, Romania is usually reduced to the stereotype of vampires, thieves and poverty, but this country has way much more to offer. If you watched my Strange Romanian Traditions video, you're probably already familiar with the wild, colorful and oftentimes quite morbid nature of Romanian folk culture, which combines elements of orthodox Christianity and ancient paganism. Many of our traditions are related to death, which in our culture isn't seen as the end but as a journey to the afterlife. And we have some interesting traditions which have the role of making this crossing less bumpy. Though, let's be real, crossing to the afterlife is way less bumpy than your average Romanian road. <laughs> In the past, when a young boy or girl passed away before they were wed, their loved ones gave them the opportunity to get married posthumously, making sure they would not return as evil spirits to take a bride or a groom. The main reason behind this is that in Romanian culture, the wedding was always seen as the happiest day of someone's life, so the death of an unmarried person was considered as a cruel twist of fate which needed to be fixed. In some regions, the beloved was represented by a fir tree, which was decorated by sweets and ribbons. This tradition gave birth to some of the most iconic funeral songs, which were usually sung by young girls while they decorated the fir tree. In some regions, however, the deceased was buried in a wedding attire, and the young lass or lad had to play the role of their future spouse during the funeral ceremony. Meaning that in Romania, even a dead person has a more exciting love life than I do. The grief is a difficult thing to deal with, especially if you are mourning the death of a young person, which is why it has become such such a big part of Romanian culture to honor the ones we lost with some unique and a little bit bizarre traditions. Macedonia is the forgotten South Slavic country, located between Greece, Serbia, Bulgaria, Albania and the place that shall not be named. Now the official name of the country is North Macedonia. Cause like Greece bullet them into yeah. changing the name of the country bro. but I'll call it Macedonia because it's shorter. Unfortunately, because it's often forgotten and overlooked, there are very few sources on Macedonian culture and traditions, but we managed to find one interesting and potentially strange Macedonian custom, Tayane, or the Summer Solstice Festival. During the Summer Solstice, or around St. John's Day to be more specific, in some places in Macedonia people perform a set of rituals meant to protect their homes and families from evil. For example, people would go to the 
forest searching for ferns and they would bring them to the house to purify their homes and protect them from disease. Another common tradition includes bringing all the clothes, sheets and other textile products outside the house, leaving them in the sun and covering them with aromatic herbs. In the Prilep region, a young boy or girl would put a jug of water on their head and walk around in the village singing and collecting gifts, mostly food. Macedonia is not a country you hear of very often, and even we Balkan people sometimes forget they exist. Despite that, and despite their occasional quarrels with Greece and Bulgaria, Macedonia is still a very interesting and beautiful country, and in my opinion, they deserve more attention. Greece is the country who blessed us with democracy and whose mythology is constantly appropriated by cringy western fantasy authors. Aside from becoming a tourist hotspot thanks to its beautiful beaches and mountains, Greece is also well known for its unique and fascinating traditions. My choice for the best Greek custom comes from the stunning island of Corfu, which involves my favorite stress reducing activity, smashing ceramic pots and water jugs. This Greek eastern custom is called Botides and it's true can be traced back to the Venetians, who threw out their old belongings through the window on New Year's Day, hoping to receive new ones next year. Some sources also say that this is done to scare away bad spirits with loud noises, and others say it symbolizes the creation of an earthquake, which occurred following the first resurrection of Jesus Christ. Whichever might be the reason behind it, I think we can agree that this is a tradition worth admiring. Usually, thousands of people gather around to witness the event and surprisingly, according to the organizers, nobody ever got injured during it. With that said, for me, Greece has become one of those countries that never ceases to amaze me and every time I learn something new about Greek culture, I genuinely get blown away. Bosnia and Herzegovina is one of the most complex countries in Europe, known for its great food, a mix of Islamic and Christian culture, and ethnic tensions that have kept the country on the brink of collapse since its creation. According to memes, all Bosnians care about is hating their neighbors and worrying about landmines. However, if there's one thing that connects and unites the people of Bosnia and Herzegovina, it's bullfighting. Unlike bullfights in the Spanish-speaking world, in Bosnia there are no humans involved and the animals don't fight until death, but until one of them leaves the fight, admitting the opponent's superior strength. In fact, the animals are usually not injured, so maybe the people of the Balkans are not as savage and bloodthirsty as some of you Westerners might think. Even though bullfights are organized all over the country, and even in some places in Croatia close to the Bosnian border, the most famous is the Grmečka Korida. These bullfights attract thousands of visitors every year and are accompanied by a festival with a lot of food, beer and singing. This is just one of many interesting traditions that you can find in this beautiful chaotic country that unfortunately usually ends up in headlines because of some crazy political bullshit. Lately, I only ever hear about Montenegro when people who were failed by the American education system get offended by its name. Who decided to name a country Montenegro? When, was, when were they founded? Was it a joke on black people? They don't look black, so I don't know. I mean, come on guys, it's Italian and it means Black Mountain and it was named after the beautiful Mont Lovchen which looks black because it is covered by thick forests and it's been called like that since the 15th century. In the Balkans, Montenegrins have been stereotyped as the laziest people of the universe, but instead of getting offended, they decided to embrace the meme and turn it into an actual tradition. With that, the lazy Olympics were born, and it is exactly what it sounds like. The competitors don't have to show any special talent or sporting prowess, they just have to lay on the mattress, eat, drink and shitpost online, as Montenegrins usually do. They aren't allowed to get up or to go to the bathroom, and so far 
where the record for lazing around is over two days. This is organized in the northwest Montenegrin village called Plesna and generally there are dozens of locals as well as people from Bosnia and Herzegovina and Serbia taking part in the event. The origin of the lazy Montenegrin stereotype comes from the days of Yugoslavia, when such jokes were made about all ethnic groups based on a different negative characteristic. In recent years, these jokes gained a huge popularity online, becoming a major part of Balkan culture, thanks to which we can all gather around to aggressively insult each other without anyone getting hurt. And I genuinely admire the good people of Montenegro for turning this slander into an international event. I mean, imagine if other countries turned their offensive stereotypes into a competition, like Romania is organizing a pickpocket Olympics. Or if Croatians competed in selling overpriced coffee to German tourists. Or serves about who can commit more. Europe is a very interesting and diverse place, full of fascinating culture, but when thinking about Southeastern Europe, a lot of people immediately remember some stereotype they saw in the media and simply dismiss it as Eastern Europe. Few people visit this region, and those who do usually don't look any deeper into their destination than how to book a hotel and where to eat. However, the Balkans can provide much more to an alert and interested visitor, and the vast and diverse culture that changes region to region, or even town to town, does not fall behind Western Europe when it comes to beauty and complexity. Yet European culture is always represented by the customs of mainstream countries like France, Germany or Italy, and people tend to forget about half of the continent, especially this wide little corner. So I hope that in this video we managed to convince you that the Balkans are an astonishing yet underrated place, which gave birth to many bizarre traditions that make this area the most culturally intriguing part of Europe. But enough about our opinions, what do you think about these traditions? Tell us in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up. Big thanks to Joja from Kropnik for helping out with this video. And big thanks to Anna for featuring me on her channel. If you're interested in content about Croatia and the Balkans presented in a satirical way, feel free to check out my channel or follow me on Instagram at kropnik.official for dank Balkan memes. Don't forget ladies, he can make homemade bread. Anyway, if you want to see more content about the culture, history, literature and gaming related topics of Central and Eastern Europe from a Transylvanian perspective, check out my other videos and smash that subscribe button or the copper dick owl will grate you. Thanks for tuning in and have a nice day. Se ne trži, ni ti ne kupuje Ki ljubiti ne zna, ki ljubiti ne zna Naj se ne hajde